everyone, I am Saski and you are tuning in to Disabled, Queer and Here Pride. Now we promised you celebrities and we have delivered. My next guest is an LGBTQ plus ally, always a good one, a disability activist and campaigner, a star in one of the UK's biggest soaps, and I think in, in the panic, really, <laughs> playing Izzy Armstrong. Please, everyone, give a warm welcome to Coronation Street, Cheryl Lee Houston. Cheryl Lee, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, uh, no, thank you. I know you've obviously got a really busy schedule, and so really appreciate your time, you know, um, you know, speaking to us today so, so thank you so just quickly talking a bit about um izzy armstrong she's a bit of a feisty character yes. and uh, you know in terms of personality traits any similarities there or is, is it uh I think there are some, and I think the longer you play a character, the more bits of your own personality tend to creep through, I think. Um, I think when I started, I tried to make her far away from me as possible. Um, but then I suppose playing somebody for quite a while, that her traits have impacted on my character traits as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think she's a bit louder than I am. Well, a bit more ballsy than I am. If, which I'd love to be. I aspire to be that um, blunt and direct sometimes, with a, with a gentle touch. With a gentle touch. Well, I'll, I'll touch on that a bit later because actually, I think that not that not not necessarily like Izzy Armstrong, but I think you definitely, you know, I think you definitely uh, give yourself a bit more credit because uh, some of the things I've when I've looked, I've done some research on you and seen, you know, what we'll talk about a bit more about your campaign and things that you're putting forward for disability rights and support. I, I think, you know amazing <laughs> thank but you we let me tell, i'll come back to that because what i want to say to you as well is, is you know um did, i mean did you always want to be an actor was it something that you always aspired to be utterly utterly and n activists never came across in my and i think um, i'm a complete accidental activist and my passion is acting and i've always been oh ever since I was really young and I saw the film Annie and the singing and the dancing and that energy I was like, I want to do that. And I mean, I can't sing and I can't dance, but it was just <laughs> that, <a> that, <laughs> that passion and the, the energy. And I, I just f love finding who characters are and what that journey is and adding all the bits up in the script that then tell you who that person is and how they respond. Yeah. And I mean, and you, you know, you do it really well. Right? Izzy's character is great. You know, we, all, we all love her. Um, you know, this is a Disabled Queer and Peer Pride event and it's shining the spotlight on the talents of uh, the LGBTQ plus uh, disabled community. Um, you know, but it's also focusing on people with disabilities and also about, you know, maybe the impact that has on everyday life. I know similar to um, Izzy's character, you actually in real life, you do have um, EDS, um, which is uh, Ella's Danos syndrome. Is that correct? Yes, it's... Um it means the whole of my skeleton dislocates incredibly easily because all my sockets are too big and I've got a connective tissue disorder, which means all my connective tissues, muscles, tendons, ligaments, nerves tear as I move a lot. So it's like a perpetual damage heal cycle I live through really. So, but that's, it's funny, you, as a disabled person, you, it's a lot of your identity, but it's not your identity at all. But I think what part of the identity it gives you is a lot of strength and a lot of different coping mechanisms to life so I think what it's done is taught me to really live life to the full and do as much as I can when I can actually physically move because I will lose a lot of time to not being able to move or speak in, in my sort of week I have a pattern of where I lose one or two days a week so I think in a way that's made me quite driven in the other points so that was a really useful tool that it gave me yeah I mean absolutely because I, you know again I, I know that you said that you can get quite painful you know regularly it's painful and you have such a busy schedule on coronation street and just in life in general i mean you know having that motivation and that positivity where did you get that from who who inspired you in your in your life to my mum was my yeah. yeah she was totally it's funny when when she passed away we looked through i think and i kept finding these little um you know she was trying to stop the japanese gardens and the local park being shut down getting a road closed because there'd been accidents and kids being hurt getting zebra crossings by schools she was a real 
she was this real sort of person and of a different generation as well that generation where the wife didn't really have money you know was much more of a housekeeper worked but that went back into the family pot but her drive for change I think definitely was in me um totally and 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 think definitely been inspired by that but also pain's quite a good driver for I always trying to because I'm continually in pain so I'm always trying to find another thing that's going to help me out and I think over the years I've discovered without even realizing creativity is a massive one for that massive for the adrenaline it gives you for the natural serotonin um, which are all brilliant for pain I know so distraction the busier you are the less weirdly you feel it but then that's why I crash and burn a lot. So it, it's a bittersweet pill. Do you know what I mean? I think if I'd learned to level and didn't use those as some pain mechanisms, I probably wouldn't be as poorly as I am when I do get poorly, if you see what I mean. So, I mean, yeah, I really love the fact that, you know, you're talking about having that mo- motivation and, you know, that, that drive and that positive energy. Um, and when I talk to my friends who have also, you know, got disability, wheelchair users, um, people who, they, there's a daily struggle that a lot of people don't, Know, sort of know about you know I think oh, my friends are, are real and people from the disabled community are real kick ass you know because so many people would just be oh I've got a headache or I've got and I can't do it I can't do it. you know you are clear examples of positive role models and people who are striving forward on a daily basis um and also you know as as like yourself like a lot of my friends uh, with disabilities they are campaigners as well and I just think you know there's a lot to be said there and uh, this is why I don't understand why, what you know, disabled queer in here in particular, the uh, reason they set that up is because they felt like it was um, people with disabilities in the LGBTQ plus community were often sort of marginalised even further, left behind. I mean, you know, you're living proof that there's impact and what you can do when you really set your mind to it, right? Yeah, I, I think it, it, there's many things in what you say, because also I think it's that thing of going when when you have no choice, you then have different choices. So like my, I think everybody's pain levels uh, are the most they've ever experienced. And because mine are, are massive, I kind of, yeah, you kind of go, is this, it, st- it starts to mess with your head of, of where that actually is. But then also you have no choice of going actually I've also gone the other way and I think we all have done at different points is where the disability has taken over and that's a really hard one to get out of because that can just take you you know it can take all that off you um but then I found I'm really lucky in the fact I've got something I absolutely love doing so therefore that's given me the passion and drive to push through and that's given me other things do you know what I mean that's benefited me an awful lot but a lot of it was accidental just because I wanted things to change so because I didn't agree with how things were and I <laughs> do you know what I mean I think we need to be much better represented it's really interesting that in society we're elevated sometimes for awards for being brave or you know pride or whatever you know being proud of you achieving certain things because you did something where it's actually you're just a human being but because the way often we're portrayed is as heroes or somebody who's suffering then society's viewpoint of us i think is very different to who we actually are and that's what i really would like to have seen changed in my lifetime definitely is that we need to be seen as an equal footing because then those skills that you have got through um i hate that word adversity but through finding solutions to enable you to achieve the things you want to do that were blocked to you mostly because of access or society or opinions the 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 physical barriers actually we've been really lucky if you can say that about covid the one good thing it has given us is an equal playing field a place where everybody can get into the same room um a way that means that society has been mass has had gone through a quick mass education on how to engage with people in different ways. And then hopefully moving forwards, that means we've set a different playing field. So adjustments will be made for people for jobs. Adjustments will be made to make things much easier for people to participate, to get those key brains in the room that people weren't realizing they were missing out on. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and this is, you know, again, going back to the disabled queer in here, uh, the CEO, Wayne um, Allington, he, he set up, the, there was a first Pride that he put on last year, and it was actually at a venue, so it was a, a, pride, a physical Pride for people to attend because Pride in itself, everyone wants to celebrate, but it wasn't as accessible. Um, now that we, this year, again, a, a, a positive, off, off lockdown, 
is that actually we can reach so many more people who wouldn't have still been able to to be at that point. In an idea, what we're planning here as a movement, we want to see these changes. We don't want it to be that, oh, now we can rely on Zoom or online virtual events because that's still not good enough by no means. But as you say, it is, uh, it's a, a opening up opportunities for people to, you know, have a voice and be seen and, and show who they are and that, again, they deserve equal support and inclusion. So, you know. Totally. It means you get a much wider reach. Everybody gets to be involved, to be involved when if it was, whether it was a physical thing or a financial thing or just not being able to get somewhere, it means, and it means that everybody can now be involved. And hopefully what a lot of us will take from that is when we do go back to doing physical room events, that we will also somehow keep this online inclusion so that people can engage because that's what makes it more exciting the more brains you have into something always makes it more richer speaking about you know your characters your tv um actually sorry, sorry. thinking about the tv and media uh, industry in terms of you know positive representation and inclusion um obviously your character is great um you know is it three times a week, if not more, people can see you on their screens as positive representation. But I mean, are is the industry changing for people with disabilities? Um, you know, is there it is massively, utterly massively, and we are uh, on agendas that we've never been on before, which is absolutely fantastic for me personally. I'd like it to move a bit faster. Um, but obviously I would because, you know, I'm 20 years into my career and it's, I'm, I mean, I'm so fortunate. I'm in my 11th year on Coronation Street and that is phenomenal um, achievement. And I'm so fortunate to be in an environment where I can learn so much from so many different people. Um, and I think Coronation Street had a, had a ripple effect, definitely. I know so work that I've done behind the scenes with, you know, some of the execs and stuff and people who are keen at ITV who have been, keen to make that change and have those conversations so for example we ran an audition day for uh disabled actors but ensuring it's what we do a lot with dan because you always ensure that the disabled artist leaves with as much as the um industry guest or industry provider because otherwise it's always become people with disabilities will get it don't they that we're quite often a, a product of a scheme and a scheme's always a <sighs> A thing that's a tick box and done or a wheels been reinvented 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 and it's about changing that and making that so different and from that audition day the actors went away with the show reel um piece filmed on coronation street set with one of the actors but also it meant then we got liam who plays kathy's son who works in roy's roles and then also melissa johns came as a visiting artist so and she's reoccurred two or three times i think um and it's just that thing of making a change through conversations and through just showing how to do it. I think in a way, change through conversations to ensure you've got the conversations going that let's do this, but then it's just practically do it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think by Coronation Street doing it, they, and continually doing it, they stopped it being a thing. Do you know what I mean? And as he moved from, you know, probably received by the audience as a disabled character, she's just seen as a character now, that sort of, it's sort of filtered through which is which is really exciting but I think quite often we're still surprised when we see a disabled actor on tv or we comment on it which means that we're not enough of us there yeah no that's it I mean and that goes you know when we talk again about underrepresented groups you know this is the pride event that you know that we're, we're talking about as well um for a disabled crew in here and, and I think that's so true in terms of uh positive representation the more people see more people with disabilities, more people who are uh, LGBTQ+, plus, more people of colour, you know, all this, you know, all the underrepresented groups, people, uh, it, it's not a thing, it's just we are also regular people living in society, you know, and we deserve exactly the same inclusion and respect as, as everybody else. So, you know, on that, talk to me a bit more about Dank, because I know you've done a lot of work to bring, uh, um, you know, support the characters on Coronation Street, which is great, but Dank, uh, I'm really interested to hear more about. Ah. Uh. Well, Dank is the Disabled Artist Network community. It's set up as a project from our company, Triple C, which we set up three years ago to change how disabled people access the arts and how we're employed in the arts. So we do like a 360 approach. We work in schools with young people. We work in the community and then we have Dank, which is our professional strand. But then also from that, it's employing those artists back eventually to be um, 
working with young people in between different jobs, which means therefore that disabled young people get role models and we move, we start making that change massively. We're a couple, two and a half years into the Dank project and we now have 900 subscribers to our opportunities mailing list, to our events, which means we, and the idea behind Dank was always as a disabled artist, you were told, they always thought you were the only one or they didn't know where to find you. So our idea, I suppose exactly like what you were doing here is it's bringing people together. So you stop feeling like the only one and you meet your community and you're, you know, you can engage and then you can make a great display to change through that engagement. Um, so we started in rooms in different arts organizations. So then the arts organization, instead of having the three or four disabled people that normally come to attend events, they got 60 to 100 disabled people in their venue. They're going, okay, we've learned X, 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 X about different things about access. And then that carries on that conversation. It also means the artists then make links with the venue. But we also have industry guests. Um, and it's always a solution focused conversation about what the blocks are in the industry. And then from those conversations, we look at what the blocks are, find the solution and then create the solution. So for example, we had, uh, what, we just got eight writers going through to spec script stage overseen by two professional writers, Debbie Oates and Ben Tago, um, over a year to see their spec scripts, which is how you then engage in the industry as a writer if you have your own script. Um, underneath that, we've caught over 120 disabled writers who attend monthly webinars. We've had, uh, we have like Kat Pugsley, who um, script edited on the A Word. We've had Marigold Joy, who script edited on uh, Call the Midwife. We've had Jack Thorne. We've had Matt Lucas. We just have people passing over their knowledge and it's about then engaging with the, you can then ask questions for the second half of the webinar, which means you're then learning from people who are doing stuff. Cause that's how you find your, that's how you learn the most, I think, isn't it? Learning people's processes and how they've approached their career and also given advice on yours. Um, so we had, I think we had 11 events. So we got to the point where just our last one pre lockdown was at ITV and we had 110 disabled artists. And I think we had 17 industry guests from different companies. So all the, the industry is starting to engage with us. And because what we're doing is we're saying it's a solution focused approach. Nobody knows everything. And let's help you take away that fear. Cause a lot of what it is about employing disabled artists is the fear of getting it wrong or saying something wrong. So it's like, actually, we're here. There's loads of us. If you don't know the answer, we don't know the answer. We will know somebody who does. I know. So it's always about trying to involve as many artists as we can into conversations or into projects. So we now have regular writers, uh, the writers group. We have a uh, creative writing once a week. We have script reading for actors every two weeks. And we have a series of webinars. We've been doing webinars since March two a week. Uh, and we're just taking a month, two months break on that. But the idea is just to forever keep, keep engaging and looking at where those blocks are. So for example, uh, the A word gave us 10 paid placements for people in production. So they had time to shadow and work alongside people, uh, to, which then got you experience. But it also, one of the big problems for people engaging is into the TV industry is runner is the entry point and that's not really accessible for many people in many access requirements. So we're looking at different ways and different solutions and that's something we're trying to get other companies to start take up and not take up on. We've become the BFI strategic, uh, strategic partner on disability and we're also talking to BAFTA, ITV, BBC. So we're just keeping these conversations going and coming up with projects and solutions that just keep ensuring we're engaged the artist with the end end person to then be able to who can make a change we're always talking to key change makers people um so that people can get employed or get experience to then be connected to their next level of, of career because that's what we found with most of the blocks is that we're not being trained we're not being employed so how do we you know how do we connect talent with the need for it and take away that fear and make it feel supported so it stops being the responsibility on the individual rather than when you go into a situation as a disabled person for the first time you then as well as getting used to the situation you also then have to get everybody else used to you and used to access whereas if those conversations have been had before and there's procedures put in place and an understanding then that evaporates all that and then hopefully that's starting to make quite a change yeah you know what it, it's so important that we have these conversations and I I can relate in the sense from a, a LGBTQ plus um, 
a perspective because I'm a, an inclusion trainer and a consultant uh, on tackling homophobia, biphobia, transphobia in schools and workplace. And when you talk about the word fear, interesting, right? It is so true that when people don't understand about something, about a community, about a type of person, or they're worried about using certain language, it just really builds these barriers. And mm. for God's sake, you know, we're all just human. Let's have a conversation. And like you say, you, you don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers. It's like, let's work together and educate ourselves. Yes, and talk to the people who do have the answers. Exactly. Because then you can take away that fear about terminology, about whatever it is that is the block. But you're right, it is. It's get because I think that is the biggest thing is people's fear of getting something wrong, but then that creates a barrier which when you on the receiving end of that doesn't feel very pleasant. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it just ends up holding people back and they're yeah, losing opportunities where that really shouldn't uh, happen be So that's amazing about that. And God factors and you know, BFI, that's some great leaps there, isn't it? Yeah, so, we've we've been really fortunate. It's just grown and grown. Originally it just started as we thought you know, we, we opened the doors and then 60 people turned up at home in Manchester. And we're like, plum and neck. And then they, we just, every time the whole team gets so excited. Yeah, you know, there's a team of five of us and we've all brought very different things to it. And I think that's been really key is working well as a team um, and listening to what people want. So it's not about, it's done for people. It's done by us together collectively, because I think that's how you make a change stronger is if you're willing to go, okay, us as a community, get that there's blocks how do we help you include us because you will appreciate that and you'll benefit from it and that that's i think a massive success of dank and that's where these conversations because by meeting the industry and then employing people or getting good connections they then they've spread the word which then has given us much more of a voice that's it yeah and it has to work both ways doesn't it that communication mm. is so important it's key uh, really so, you know, there'll be lots of people that are tuning in to uh, to watch this interview uh, because there's so many massive fans of you um, for Disabled Career in Here. But there'll also be people that have aspirations, have goals, uh, that they also have disabilities. And as a result, they have, don't have the confidence. You know, it's been a barrier throughout their life. What sort of, um, you know, advice, words of wisdom would you give to those people who are feeling like, you know, oh, I want to be like Cheryl Lee. I want to do that. That's, the, I, that's what I want. But they just don't have that confidence. What would you say? Trust yourself and take a risk anyway and, and know that we all doubt ourselves. On whatever level we perceive somebody to be, they are always full of, oh, is it, you know, because arts, and, and if we're talking specifically about creativity, because you're, you're putting quite a bit of your soul forwards, but have a go, I think. Have a go because whatever, it will always give you something back, whether it's a shift in confidence or you've learned something or you connected with somebody. And I think, I think that applies to life across the board, whether you want to be a creative or not, is just take a risk, ask somebody. Because I think I've learned that a lot through Triple C and through more recent years is the more you ask somebody, they might say yes, they might not, but you don't know until you try. And yeah, just if you're a bit worried, take some really small, safe steps. Don't trip yourself up. Don't leap straight into something if you feel that that's going to then send you, yeah, don't set yourself up to fail figure out what some gentle first steps are and then just keep going yeah that's it absolutely great great advice there thank you Shirley and that is really it isn't it you know just do it you know just just go for it and see where it takes you and you, more often than not you'll be pleased you did than you didn't right yeah I have things like even on my in banking or whatever different things pop up and it always says trust yourself because yeah. we don't do we which is really daft but yeah I'm gonna when you're saying trust yourself, is that with the banking you're not going to open? Oh, no. <laughs> I think in life, because it has this thing you could pop up, <laughs> you could do an affirmation. I was like, right, I'm going to do that to remind myself to keep trusting myself. It's okay. Yeah. No, no, yeah. No, but you are right. And, and it is good to do that. Those little, I have similar, you know, it's great to have those little motivational sort of uh, pop-ups. So, and, and it keeps keep you on track because, you know, the mind chatter can often lead us down the road you know, where it's, uh, where we don't need it to take us. So, Especially when you're people who experience, sometimes we're just judged when we shouldn't be. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I think sometimes we, we take bigger knocks than, you know, others do. So therefore you have to find things that are your inner strength and just remind you, surround yourself with people you love who remind you of who you are and then you can be who you are much more, I think. Yeah, definitely. And I think that message goes across the board again for the LGBTQ plus community. 
that always being your true self and very much be believe in that that statement. So, you know, I think that's a um, great, great message for people who are tuning in today. And uh, just to end, Charity, because it is Pride, you know, it's still Pride celebration that we have here. Um, you know, what what we, I'd also have that party. Of course, it's the political movement. Usually I say this the other way around. I go, it's in the party, but it's a political movement as well. <laughs> this time I'm going to say, yeah, it, well, it is a party because, you know, it is. Um, how do you kind of sort of let your hair down and relax when you're not, you're not you're sort of filming, you're having your time out? Have you got any particular pride anthems or music that you like to listen to that you're like, oh, yes, I love a bit of that. That is me. I love things that make me want to dance. And we do have two disco lights plugged into our ceiling for that reason. <laughs> and a smoke Love machine. <laughs> Get yourself a 20 quid smoke machine and a cheap disco light. You can always have a nice party, even on your own. Come home, feel a bit sad, put the smoke machine on and the disco lights and you'll be happy. That's what I do. <laughs> Oh, you got my got my friend one. You can even get a bulb that you can just put into your normal light. What? Anything that just makes you feel. Do you know what I mean? If you want to just put some tunes on and have a good dance, that's what I always recommend because it yeah gets your serotonin going and just makes you feel a bit happy. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think anyone watching this now is going to be off going uh, getting a load of disco balls and <laughs> plugging party pops. So that's amazing. Oh, listen, thank you so much, Ellie. Um, I would always love to be speaking to you for, forever more, but I know you've got a very busy uh, schedule and I really appreciate that you've given us your time. You know, as a voice, as a positive role model, as an amazing human being, and also, you know, just for disabled queer in here, because we really want to hope that this helps to shine that spotlight, make that, make a difference um, for inclusion, as we've talked about, you know, for equality. Everyone deserves fair access to opportunity, right? So thank you. Thank you so much. Shannon. Oh, it's a pleasure. And thank you for having me. I just think what you're doing is fantastic. Wow. So yeah, and enjoy the party.